for him. Now I've got no respect for him, you know? I've got no respect for the way he dealt with it, even after the situation. He's in the back. He couldn't have been more sorry in the cage. He's in the cage, he couldn't have been more sorry. When he got to the back and he's got his little entourage with him and his little crew, he's like, he's a fucking pussy, he's this, he's that. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? If, if Walter Harris wants to go again, I'm no fucking pussy, I'll go again. Simple as that. It's like, we've got to score the set. If you want to go again, I'll go again. This time, I ain't going to give him no respect. It's going to be a different fight. If it happens again, I don't know if the UFC want it to happen again or not. But that's my take on it. That, you know, the guy, the guy blatantly cheated and, 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 and he got disqualified. It's like, you don't, you don't play a football match, wait for a guy to kick a ball, and then 10 seconds later, fucking run up to him and blatantly take him out. You know, what's going to happen? The referee's going to go, here you go, red card, you're off. And it's the same, same rules, same. I'm angry about it, even still now, but that's my take on it. You know, the guy, the guy fucking blessed and he cheated and he could say what he liked. His fans can fucking tell me all they like, call me a pussy. I'm no pussy. You know, you, you've seen my fights on the UK scene and stuff. You know, I've, I, I've been punched. Punch where and one fight and I don't even know where I'm to after I've won the fights, you know. But you know, in that situation, I'm not willing to give someone a big advantage to knock me out after they blatantly fouled me like he did. So that that's my take on it, you know. So um, fuck well, Aaron. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, I was surprised that, that uh, obviously that rematch didn't happen straight away, but obviously, you know, the UFC, they want you to fight uh, Dimitri Pogricic. Uh Obviously, it's his UFC debut, but this guy has had like 14, uh, he's got a 14 fight win streak and a no contest. What are your thoughts on him? Well, it's a 14 fight win streak and then he's got a no contest as well. So he's. Yeah, like, uh, I think he's. Um... I don't know, I've, I'm starting to change my attitude, my, my fighting attitude is starting to change, but you know, I'm starting to realise now that you don't play at this game, especially at this level, these guys are sort of, you know, these guys are in there to take my head off, and I need to be in there to take theirs off as well, that's why the referee's there to, to stop us from doing that, but that's the essential mindset. I'm starting to come and bring together now. So my my, my I think he's a perfect developer for me. Um, you look at his 14 fight win streak. Let's be honest, who's he fought? You know, he's fought guys where they're like 0 and 2, 0 and 3, or whatever. If you look at the three losses they've got. The three losses is against him. You know, my my personal opinion. Yeah, he's good. He's good. He wouldn't be in the UFC if he wasn't good. You know, but his record counts for shit because he's padded. So, me and, me and Dimitri are going to throw down at UFC London and I've got a big point to prove. And I'm, I'm going to throw down. I'm coming to fight and I'm going to throw down and I'm going to prove to everyone that I belong in the UFC. You know? And obviously, yeah. with you being a heavyweight as well, we do have to ask. Obviously, there was a huge fight this, uh, you know, this come week. It was. I'm going to ask you about Vincent Singano as a heavyweight. What are your thoughts? Because that was, I think, the scariest knockout I've ever seen. And you know, it isn't just anyone. That was Alistair Overeem that he did that to. What, like, as a heavyweight, what are your thoughts on him? I thought you decapitated him. <laughs> Sorry. Is, is um, Francis Ngannou is one scary ass beast. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm in the same division of it as him. If, if they said to me tomorrow, you can fight Francis Ngannou, I'm, I'm fighting him. You know, that's what we get paid for. We get paid for fights, so I'm fighting him. But like, this, uh, realistically, let's talk about him in general. He's he's a beast. His style, the beat he hits you, you go to sleep, sort of thing. But same, I think same for a lot of heavyweights. You you get hit by them, you go to sleep. I think fighter IQ is going to beat this guy. Some guy with a high fighter IQ, maybe such a steep. So, I was about to ask about him. You know, a guy like him, the fighter IQ he's got is like the, the, 
this is the guy you can't go toe for toe with. You can't be getting involved in wars with this guy. This is the guy where you, you know you need to you need to start resting him. You need to start pushing him up against him. You need to start getting lactic into his muscles. You need to slow him down. This is a guy where you need to have a solid game plan. And if one game plan doesn't work, you need to have game plan A, B, and C. Um, I, I, th- I think he is beatable. I, I really do. But... Okay, well, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us, Mark. And obviously you're busy in Thailand, so it was nice of you to take a bit of time. And we look forward to seeing you at UFC London. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'll see you there. After, <laughs> after party. After sounds good. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, thank uh, you so much. We got there uh, in the end with the signal. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Okay,